In the previous video, you learned a simple theory of directivity control. In this video, we'll set up a basic experiment to create a reduction in a specific frequency range. The goal of this experiment is to generate a cancellation point at the MIC position. If you haven't watched the gated measurement tutorial yet, it's best to do so first. First, position the second driver at a distance from the first one. In KII3 speakers, the side drivers cancel out the mid-range sound at the rear of the speaker. Although the process is complex, we'll replicate it in a simpler form using just two drivers. The driver closer to the mic cancels out the sound from the farther driver. Keep in mind that this cancellation occurs at a specific angle and slightly affects other angles as well. A simple example is using two drivers with opposite polarities and a specific distance between them. Setup Instructions Place the drivers 50 centimeters away from the microphone. Position both the mic and drivers far from walls to minimize reflections. Connect each driver to a separate channel on your sound card. Measure the frequency response of each driver individually. In my setup, the distance is 16 centimeters. You can experiment with different distances, but keep in mind that smaller distances result in more bass cancellation. Larger distances reduce the effective range of directivity control. To achieve better control across different frequencies, we can place one driver at a smaller distance to manage higher frequencies and another at a larger distance for low frequencies. It's clear that low pass and high pass filters can help divide the frequency range between these controlling drivers. The impulse response is the most reliable indicator for measuring the acoustic delay between two drivers, and it alone can describe the driver's behavior, including its frequency and phase response. This means that all the necessary information is contained within this simple, compact peak. Set up the IR window to analyze the pure responses without reflections. As you can see, the magnitude of the two drivers is different. Before adjusting their amplitude, let's take a measurement. Step in Equalizer APO. Apply a delay to the channel corresponding to the more front driver. This method gives you the acoustic delay between the drivers without needing complex calculations. We set a 3 millisecond delay for the front driver. The measured delay between the two impulses is about 2.5 milliseconds, meaning the actual delay between the drivers is 0.5 milliseconds. This is the delay we need to apply to the right channel. At first glance, it can be said that if these two opposing impulses are perfectly identical and completely overlapped, they will cancel each other out. We said the frequency responses are not identical, and if we examine the graph, we'll notice that the greatest cancellation occurs at the frequency where the sound levels of both drivers are the same. So, what will happen if we equalize the entire frequency range? First, save the L channel response as a text file and define it as a calibration file something like this. After measuring the L channel again, we should see a flat horizontal line up to 2000 based on the defined range in the text file. Now, perform a measurement on the air channel. As can be seen, 
there is a difference of about 4 dB. Follow these steps to apply filters to the R channel and match it with the L channel. The responses are now identical, and we expect an even greater reduction after applying these steps. We perform another measurement on the sum of the R and L channels. As expected, a significant reduction occurs, confirming that magnitude equality is one of the most important factors. Try a different distance and repeat the process this will give you a broader understanding of cardioid design. I should emphasize once again that this setup creates a cancellation point at a specific angle. You can test it at various angles and compare the results. Thanks for watching.